Most of the enzymes involved in genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology are known as DNA manipulative enzymes because they are involved in the manipulation of DNA molecules. That means cutting, joining and modification of DNA. There are four major classes of DNA manipulating enzymes, nucleases, ligases, polymerases and modifying enzymes. Nucleases are enzymes that cut, shorten or degrade nucleic acid molecules. Ligases join nucleic acid molecules together. Polymerases make copies of molecules and mo modifying enzymes remove or add chemical groups. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Dr. Tapati's presentation. Myself Dr. Tapati Bhanjate. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about nucleases. These are the enzymes which are involved in cutting, shortening or degradation of nucleic acid molecules. Nucleases break phosphodiester bonds in between two nucleotides and therefore they cut or shorten DNA molecules. Now if you see this figure carefully, you can find that this is a single stranded DNA or RNA. In that case, two nucleotides attached through the phosphate group and the phosphodiester bond is present here and in that case nuclease enzyme will act on this phosphodiester bond. So there will be breakage of phosphodiester bond and in this case water is involved. So nuclease is acting on uh, DNA or RNA molecule in presence of water. So water molecule means you can write down in this way water means H plus ion and OH minus ion, right? So H plus ion will attach with this oxygen uh, group which is present with the sugar moiety whereas OH minus will attach with the phosphate group. Now you will get this type of product. This is one product and this is another product. Blue color means this, this hydrogen is actually coming from water molecule and this OH group is coming from the water molecule. Okay, so you are getting this, these two products. Now that means uh, suppose uh, your uh, DNA, this is one DNA molecule and uh, due to the action of uh, nucleus, suppose nucleus is acting on this position, then you will get these two products. That means this is um, uh, length of these two DNA will be shorter than this DNA. So shortening of the uh, DNA molecule is happening. So this is also DNA or RNA may be possible. So in this way, what is happening? Cutting of the DNA and shortening of DNA molecule by the action of nucleases. Already I told you there are two different kinds of nucleases, exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases remove nucleotides from the ends of the DNA fragments. Whereas endonucleases break internal phosphodiester bonds within DNA. Now, if you see, this is one DNA molecule, 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease removes nucleotides from the 5 prime end. So, this is the position where uh, um, three, uh, sorry, 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease will act th at this position and at this position, 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. Whereas, uh, 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease removes nucleotides from the 3 prime end. So, that enzyme will act on this position. Now, whereas if you consider about the uh, endonuclease, so this is internal bond, this is internal bond. So these are the internal, internal phosphodiester bonds. So um, endonucleases uh, will act on these positions. Endonucleases will break or can cut the DNA, uh, DNA molecule from these internal phosphodiester bonds. Different types of exonucleases are available. I am going to give you two examples. First one is BAL31 then exonuclease 3. BAL31 is obtained from Alteromonas espagiana. It degrades nucleotides from both strands of double-stranded DNA from both 5' 
phosphate and 3 prime hydroxyl timine. Now, if you see this figure, you can find out that this enzyme is acting on this position and this position. That means, uh, as it is the exonic, it has the exonic place activity. Therefore, it is acting uh, two terminal ends. It is acting on five prime phosphate end as well as uh, acting on three prime hydroxyl termini. After the degradation, uh, these are the fragments obtained. In the next step. These are the other different fragments obtained due to the action of BAL31. Now, if you see carefully, you can find out that initially there were uh, eight nucleotides present in this, uh, in this DNA. Due to the action of BAL31, it is converted to six nucleotides. And in the, and the second step, you can see four nucleotides are present. That means longer the exposure time resulting in shorter the DNA fragment. This enzyme also possesses single standard DNA and RNA endonuclease activity and is capable of cleaving at DNA or RNA nicks and gaps. Overall, if you consider about the BAL31, you can see that it has both exonuclease and endonuclease activity and it is acting on double stranded DNA as well as single stranded DNA or RNA. Second type of exonuclease example is exonuclease 3. Source is E. coli. It attacks just one strand of double stranded molecule leaving single stranded DNA as the product. It has 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. It is used for linear template DNA generation for the di deoxy sequencing technique and staggered ends on double stranded DNA. Now, if you see this figure, you can find out that due to the action of exonuclease 3, two staggered ends are produced because this enzyme is acting uh, from the 3 prime end. That means this is one cutting position and this is another um, uh, cutting position. Therefore, you are getting this type of overhanging at the 5 prime end of this DNA. In the next step, again you can find out that single nucleotide degradation is happening and uh, um, um, cohesive end or staggered end length is increased. Now I am going to give you two examples of endonucleases. First one is S1 nucleus, second one is DNA1. S1 nucleus is obtained from Aspergillus varese. It clips only single stranded DNA, including single stranded nicks in mainly double stranded molecules. Now, if you see this figure, this is single stranded DNA due to the action of S1 nucleus. These are the final fragments obtained. In the next figure, if you carefully observe it, there is a nick in there is a nick in double stranded DNA. So it is acting on the single stranded DNA in this position, single stranded nicks in double stranded DNA molecules. So we are getting these uh, fragments. This enzyme is typically used for blunting the ends of double stranded DNA or for mapping RNA transcripts. It digests supercoil plasmids primarily in regions containing inverted repeats, which generally occur in origins of replication. In these regions, the DNA adopts a cruciform structure that H1 nuclease recognizes as single standard and clips it. It can break supercoiled DNA because it contains single standard bubbles. 
It can also be used to distinguish the coil from both non supercoiled covalent circles and neat circle DNA, both of which are resistant to this enzyme. Second example of endonuclease, endonuclease enzyme is DNA1. Source is cow pancreas. It cuts both single stranded DNA and double stranded DNA. It shows non specific activity, thus, it attacks on DNA at any internal phosphodiester bond. Now, if you see this figure, this enzyme I told you it is non specific, therefore, it can act on any position. Due to the action of this enzyme, these are the final fragments obtained. Now, if you consider the next figure, you can see that it is acting on double stranded DNA. So, these are the final products. Final products means uh, you can see that prolonged DNA is one exposure results in a mixture of very short oligonucleotides. These are the short oligonucleotides and few mononucleotides. Restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes are very important enzymes required for DNA cloning. These are also known as molecular scissors. These enzymes cut double-stranded DNA only at a limited number of specific recognition sites. Those specific recognition sites contain palindromic nucleotide sequences. Now, what is palindromic sequence? Those, those are actually sequences of base pairs that read the same on two strands in 5' prime to 3' prime and in 3' prime to 5' prime directions. So, in that case, as for example, if you see madam, madam, if you read from left to right, it is madam. Now, if you read from the opposite direction also, it is madam. So, the madam is the palindromic sequence. So, in case of restriction endonuclease, they are only recognizing one type of specific palindromic sequence. In my last slide, we have seen that DNA is one also cuts double stranded DNA but shows non-specific activity. Therefore, it attacks on DNA at any internal phosphodiester bond. Whereas restriction endonucleases bind to the specific recognition sequence of the DNA and cut the two strands at specific points. More than 900 restriction enzymes have been isolated from over 230 strains of bacteria. That means main source of this enzyme is uh, bacteria which are mainly used in molecular biology lab. Now, I'm going to give you one example of restriction in endonuclease, which is ECOR1. This is very popular name. This enzyme recognizes GATTC sequence. So this is the uh, specific recognition site for ECOR1, GATTC. It cuts the DNA between bases G and A. So cutting position is here and here. G in between G and A when the sequence G A A T T C is present in the DNA and the enzyme cuts both the DNA strand at the same site. Therefore, due to, action, due to the action of this enzyme, these are the fragments which are obtained from this process and you can see that sticky ends are formed. That means overhanging positions are there at the five prime ends of these two fragments. Now see if I echo R1 from where this name is coming. Now E means this is the genus Co means species. This enzyme is obtained from E coli. So E, e means Escherichia, which is the genus. Co means coli which is the species. So, it is obtained from E. coli R strain and I is the Roman number, not I, 1 is the Roman number with the order in which the enzyme is isolated from the strain. Let's know about what is sticky end and what is blunt end. When restriction endonucleases cut the strand a little away from the center of palindrome sites but between the same two bases on the opposite strands, 
this leaves single stranded overhanging stretches at the ends they are known as sticky ends already you have seen eco r1 example in that case it is recognizing g a a t t c sequence and it cuts in between g and a sequence and it is producing overhanging uh, stretches which is known as the sticky ends at the five prime ends now another example is bam h1 recognition site is g g a t c c it cuts in between g g sequence and it is producing five prime overhanging that means five prime um, sticky ends if you consider about the hint 3 it recognizes a a g c t t sequence and uh, it cuts in between a a sequence it produces five prime sticky ends now let's talk about the blunt end many restriction endonucleases make a simple double stranded straight cut in the middle of the recognition sequence which is producing blunt end so in that case there will be no unpaired dna nucleotides on either 5 prime or 3 prime strand that means there will be no overhanging overhangs one example of blunt end forming enzyme is alu1 it recognizes agct sequence and it make a simple cut in between agct sequence it is producing two blunt ends whereas if you consider about the he3 it recognizes ggcc sequence it cuts in between ggcc sequence and producing two blunt ends so from this slide you observe that equr1 bam h1 and hint 3 they are producing sticky ends whereas alu1 and he3 produce blunt ends nucleases are used in replication process in base excision repair process nucleotide excision repair mismatch repair double stand break repair and in homologous recombination process